Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Eddie with Blue Line Pressure Washing. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams for service businesses and how we think you can integrate this and how we have integrated it into our company to help things run a little bit smoother, better operations, better communication with the entire team. The next slide that's coming up is going to basically give you the outline of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to try to keep this short, 20 minutes or less. Seven slides, I believe, is what we're going to go through. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Microsoft Teams has a lot of different features, like the organization-wide chats. You can use Teams for different parts of your organization, your office staff, your production staff, that kind of thing. Uploading your company systems, hundreds of apps, and virtual meetings. So one of the first things, when you go into Teams, you're gonna notice you have your organization-wide chat channels. So you've got the chat here, and you've also got a social media collaboration board from our social media collaboration channel. So each individual channel and team is gonna have its own post board. Now there's nothing posted in this one right now, that's why we chose it. But you can chat individually with individual members of your team or do a group chat with one or two people if you need to that type of thing. And then you have this post board where anytime a member of this team and this channel posts in here, everybody that is in this channel can read and respond to that post. Now we'll talk a little bit more about teams and channels here a little bit later in the presentation. But you can engage everybody, you can collaborate, you can post apps at the top of the, the tool board bar here is where you can put some apps that guys can go into, do some collaboration, work together, have a discussion, and quickly get important information out to members of your team. Different aspects of your business. So you'll notice here we have office staff, management, blue line pressure watching, that's our main team, and the podcast team. So in the office staff, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? We have our office manager, and our customer service representative. Management, obviously that's gonna be your office manager, your production manager, your general manager, your owner, if the owner wants to be involved in that team. Blue line pressure washing, that's where we put everybody. So if you get hired to work with blue line pressure washing, you're automatically gonna go in that team and you'll stay there for the duration. So everybody in my organization is part of this team in the general section. General kind of cut off, sorry. From there, we'll also assign them to whichever one of these other teams is what they need to be a part of. Now, notice the lock here on production staff. That's a mistake that I made, and I left it in there for this presentation. After this presentation, I'll fix it. But this is a private channel instead of a, and its own separate team. Private channels do not allow you to use as many of the apps within the channel as a team does. So if you want a production staff to create the team, then you can still use the apps that, that are necessary for that, that team to use. Unnecessary notifications for employees. I'm glad I looked back at this. So if you need to put something out to your office staff, you can throw the post up here under the general and the office staff, and you're not blowing up your production staff your management team, your podcast team, you're not blowing up their phones with notifications that really don't mean anything to them. Company systems. If you're not using systems in your company, you're really hindering your growth and kind of hurting the whole process, Get, creating more headaches for yourself than what there needs to be. So we upload our company systems into each one of the teams based on what that team needs. So you have the office staff that we're going to use as the example. You go to general, then you click up here on files, and this is what you see in our office staff channel under the file section. Daily tasks, so we use a report that our office staff can fill out. At the end of every day, it can tell us how many phone calls they made, how many emails they sent, how much work they booked on the schedule during that work day. Happy call scripts. The happy call script Great procedure. If you don't use it, I recommend using it. After two days, 
we call our customers and say, hey, I know we just washed your house. Um, wanted to give you a call and make sure that you were happy with the service. Give you a good opportunity to get feedback from the customer. The customers love it when you call to check in and make sure that they're happy. And if there was, happened to have been a problem, uh, great English, I know. If there did happen to be a problem, then you can get out in front of it and get ahead of it. Hey, you know what, Eddie? Your staff was great, but after they left, we did notice that they missed a spot on our house. Uh, so we're not really happy about that. And you know what? I'm really sorry that happened. Let me get you on the schedule for them to come out and touch that up within the next 24 hours. Great way to get ahead of things. You get your inbound call scripts, your new procedures for house wash, which I've also pinned here because that's our newest system that just came out, and I want to make sure everybody's eyes gets on it. So these all are just for the office staff. Your production crew does not need to, to know the happy call script. They don't need to see this when they're trying to find a system that applies to them how to wash, how to do windows, how to wash a house, how to set the pressure washer up, how to set up the soft wash manifold. All those different things, they need to be with production staff, but the office staff doesn't need to know about that. Production staff doesn't need to know how to do this stuff. So you can organize your company systems based on the staff members that need it. Now under general, we have a lot of training systems, a lot of introductory things, a lot of videos. There's also some videos in here, it just got cut off by the, the screenshot. But you can put all these in where you need them and be able to neatly organize your systems without having your staff waste time looking for what the system is that applies to them. You just put them all in one place so that they can find them pretty quickly and easily. There's a crap ton of apps with this thing. Some of them you have to pay for. Some of them you don't. Some of them there's free versions and paid versions. It just kind of depends on what you need. But you can tailor the apps for what you need to, to work in your team. There's whiteboard apps. There's uh, Microsoft Forms is a good app if you need to collect some data. Tasks, that's a good one that we use to generate tasks to make sure that everybody stays on top of things. And then we use Trello as a follow-up system, an automated Trello board that's great. We may do a video on that later. But some of the big ones, inspection, issue reporting, employee IDs. We use um, employee ideas. We use these three in our general team, but they can report back to other places. So one example I'm gonna give you is under issues reporting, we have an issue, say, production manager or, or technician one is at customer's house and the water source is just terrible. He's getting one, maybe two, two gallons per minute out of the water source. And we need four to five gallons a minute to keep up with our equipment. So rather than stopping, getting on a phone call, calling the office, trying to get a hold of either me or one of the office personnel, he just opens that, that tab up, you know, within his team, clicks on the issue that he's having, customer water source problem, records the information at customer A's house, uh, water source is very slow, maybe one to two gallons a minute, submit. That will then send it straight to our office staff. They can open it when they have a free moment. They're not dealing with a customer, talking on the phone. They can open that up, see that, and then notate that customer's file. Maybe we need to look at, is there a problem with the water source itself? Is that just the water pressure that's available at that location? Do we need to adjust the pricing to allow for extra time and any future services? But what is great about that is it sends it directly to who you set it up to send it to, and you're not notifying everybody on the team is not getting a notification interrupting their day because we all know if phone goes off, you're gonna pick it up and look at it. So technician three over at customer B's house is not looking at his phone going, hey, look, they're having water problems over there. Glad we're not dealing with that. There's no distraction for them. It just goes straight to your office staff or whoever you want it to go to and goes from there. There is a lot of automation in that. That's a little bit more complicated as far as some of the things you can automate, but these automate pretty easily. Uh, we'll maybe do some videos on some of the more intense stuff later. Virtual meetings. So this is a great tool to use if you are the owner and you wanna have a meeting with your team, but you don't have a, general, uh, a centralized office, 
Like for us, we, we operate out of our house. I mean, you can look around and see, I'm at home right now. The owner's on vacation. The general manager's on vacation. Uh, they want to do a check-in or the general manager's traveling for work and they want to do a check-in with the team to make sure that everything is where it needs to be or you need to have a, some type of collaboration with your team. You can set up a meeting, bring in, you, you can add a channel, you can add a, a team if you want to, type in whoever's required to attend, sends out the notification to everybody that the meeting is there. There's whiteboard apps, all kinds of apps in here. What I really love about this is when we do like a spring preparation, because it's February now, March we're gonna get blown out of the water with phone calls and everybody's gonna be running like crazy. Right now we're kinda chilling out, relaxing a little bit, which gives me time to create this content for you guys. But the whole meeting can be transcribed and recorded. <clears throat> so if you have somebody that can't attend the meeting because they're sick or unavailable for one reason or the other, they can come back and pull the recording of this meeting. It's saved into Teams. They can see the recording and watch it to see what they missed. Or if there's just a lot going on in that meeting, and you're like, I think Eddie said something about uh, a particular customer's house and, and the meeting, but I can't remember which customer it was. Let me go back and rewatch it. Or let me go back and read the transcript of the meeting. So those are some great features that are involved with the virtual meetings. That's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys can see some value here, and I hope that this helps you with your integration of Teams into your home service business. It's a great tool. gets a lot of things out of the way, prevents unnecessary distractions, and it also helps you keep everything organized and keep everybody at a good flow of work. Thanks, guys. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.